you go to the Google main page and you type in assassination attempt on. And these are the results you get right here. Truman, Reagan, Ronald Reagan, Lenin, Gerald Ford, Franklin Roosevelt, Andrew Johnson, FDR, Seward, and John Paul II. No results for Trump. It's me, I'm sure, but it seems that just 16 days ago, there was an assassination attempt on the life of Donald Trump, an assassination attempt that literally came this close, this close to fracturing his so goal and exploding his brain matter all over that stage in Butler, Pennsylvania. It would have been the most horrific live television assassination in our lifetimes, in American history. And and now you can't find any information about it. It's like reporters and journalists and news organizations who, you know, literally say that they're in the business of telling you the news have just moved on. No big deal. Just an assassination attempt. Mistakes were made. Let's move on. You know, the news cycle is crazy. And I get it. That's what they'll tell you. It's the news cycle. You know, I mean, Joe Biden has stepped down and Kamala Harris is now the candidate and everything's upended. And we got to talk about that, don't you know, because that's a bigger news story. But here's the thing. I lived through four years of the Trump presidency when we had a pretty crazy news cycle. A lot of stuff going on every single day. And yet somehow the fake story about Russian collusion always seemed to rise to the top of the agenda. You turn on your nightly news and there was always, you know, maybe first three segments had something to do with Russian collusion. Don't buy this whole, well, the news cycle is really crazy because they determine what the news cycle is. Just like right here, we determine what we're going to talk about. 16 days ago, there was an attempt made on the life of Donald Trump. He's a former president. Now he's the current leading president for this election coming up in just three short months. And they pretend like it's not a big deal. We still think it's kind of a big deal. I don't know about you, but I still haven't gotten over it. And if you want to seek out information all by yourself to take a look at it, well, good luck going to Google. You go to the Google main page and you type in assassination and attempt on. And these are the results you get right here. Truman, Reagan, Ronald Reagan, Lenin, Gerald Ford, Franklin Roosevelt, Andrew Johnson, FDR, Seward, and John Paul II. No results for Trump. That's odd, isn't it? Is Google that bad? Have they missed a step? You know, are they just... Are they just that, you know, lazy that they're not updating their search terms? Here's what it looks like in real time. You just type it in. You know how they do the autofill thing? Session attempt on, oh, when you do TR, suddenly you get Truman, but nothing on Trump. When you actually fill out the name Trump, it disappears and there's no autofill. That's an accident? No, that's very deliberate. Super duper deliberate. One you know, sort of bright spot about this entire escapade, though, through my research is that I've learned that there was, in fact, an assassination attempt on Harry Truman. Who knew? I didn't know. 60 years later, we're all learning about it. Or is it 70 years later? Assassination attempt on Donald Trump. And for some reason, Google doesn't want you to see it. Now, this has been brought to their attention. And Google claims that, oh, no, no, no. All of our safety precautions are in place and they're working properly because we don't want to direct people to any information or data that involves political violence because we're against any political violence. Now, that's kind of fascinating because all of these results that do come up are, in fact, examples of political violence. So they're clearly picking and choosing which political violence they want you to see and which they don't want you to see, which also demands an answer to the question, who out there is so fragile that they can't get basic facts about the assassination attempt of Donald Trump that just happened 18 days ago, excuse me, 16 days ago, who in the hell are they protecting? Oh, no, 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 we know better. You can't possibly see any of that information about the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. We're Google. We're here to protect you from yourself and from the truth. Seriously? Yeah, I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. So what's really at play here? I'll tell you what's really at play here. This is what's really at play here. They don't want you to see this. 
this moment right here was a galvanizing moment. You cannot look at the assassination attempt on Donald Trump until you see this. The man, bloodied but defiant, lifting his fist with the American flag billowing behind him, saying, I'm still here. They can't take me that, out that easy, easily, and I'm going to keep fighting for you. I'm going to put myself in harm's way. I'll even take a bullet for you if necessary. It's not going to stop me, so don't let it stop you. That's what they don't want you to see. Oh, Larry, you're overreacting. What are you talking about? It has nothing to do with that. Oh, really? Well, look what happens when you post this picture on Facebook. That's right. You get a cease and desist and warning saying that you shared a photo that has been altered. Independent fact checkers reviewed a similar photo and said it was altered in a way that could mislead people. Facebook determined your post has the same altered photo and added a notice to the post. If you repeatedly share false information, you might have your news feed uh, uh, lowered in the uh, algorithm. But what's altered about this? Nothing's altered about this. It's literally the truth. The same altered photo was checked in another post by independent. Yeah, I love the independent fact checkers. They're super duper independent. This was from uh, Mario Nafal who says that Facebook is trying to literally rewrite history uh, because that's exactly what they're trying to do. Our friend Billboard Chris, Chris Elston, he went to the Meta AI engine and asked this question. Why is there rich instruction? Oh, well, first I want to say he, he Googled information about the assassination attempt on Donald Trump and it didn't come up with any responses. This is the AI through Meta. He then asked about the Kamala Harris presidential campaign, and it was just reams and volumes. I mean, considering it's only four days old, uh, it just volumes and volumes and volumes of information about Kamala Harris for president. So then Chris asked, why is there rich and structured information about Harris campaign, but not about the Trump assassination attempt? I shall read you what artificial intelligence from Meta replied with. The reason for the disparity in information is due to the fact that the Trump assassination attempt is a fictional event, whereas Kamala Harris's 2024 presidential campaign is a real and ongoing event. As a reliable assistant, I strive to provide accurate and trustworthy information. Since there has been no real assassination attempt on Donald Trump, I couldn't find any credible sources to provide detailed information on the topic. What the hell is going on here? And it's always in one direction too, isn't it? It's always in one direction. So you're using the meta, which, you know, last I checked, there's like a billion people on Facebook and or Instagram. You go and trigger their AI engine and you ask them about information about the Donald Trump assassination attempt. And it comes back and says it's a fictional account. It didn't really happen. They're altering reality for their own political purposes right before our eyes. Also, one extra level of insidious rewriting of history. If you go to your favorite search engine and you type in President Donald, the two results that autofill for you are President Donald Reagan, which is not a real person. It's a misspelling of Ronald Reagan. And my favorite response, President Donald Duck, who I believe is currently the incumbent president of the United States. He's only got a few more months left. But if you ask him, excuse me, Mr. President, what's your name? Uh, Donald Duck. This is a very real thing. Now, listen, here's the insidious way around how Google and other search engines act uh, operate. If you go and try this right now, you might get a different result. They may have already changed this because they've been found out. But I assure you, I and our entire production team here tried this before we went live. And these were the results we were getting as well. Why do you think they're doing that? Well, Elon Musk, Elon Musk, who knows a little bit about technology and the Internet and social media and artificial intelligence. Well, he pointed out the campaign contributions by employees of Alphabet. That's the parent company that owns Google. Uh, look at this. The number one employer of donors to the Biden campaign is, in fact, Alphabet. If, if you do a search on employer name 
of all the people who have donated to Biden for president, the number one result with 1.7 million employees donating is Google Alphabet Inc. Number two, I find fascinating, University of California. And then number three, the U.S. government. And then Microsoft. And then Amazon. And then Facebook. And then Apple. Do you see? Do you see a bit of a situation here with big tech and who they're supporting and how they might be putting the thumb on the scale here? Meanwhile, if you go to Donald Trump, fascinatingly, it's the Postal Service that is number one. You go, mailman. Then the Defense Department, then the government, uh, which is also number three, but dwarfed compared to Joe Biden's number. Then the Army, then American Airlines, Wells Fargo, the Villages, and the Department of Veterans Affairs. Joe Biden is all about big tech, and big tech is all about Joe Biden, which, of course, means they're all about Kamala Harris now. But it's not just enough to put the thumb on the scale to favor Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They actually are rewriting reality, facts, and truth by claiming that the assassination attempt never occurred. Elon Musk also spoke out about this on X over the weekend. Like, th There's currently a massive amount of hidden censorship that, that is done by by Google um, and by, frankly, also by Facebook and Instagram. And, <clears throat> and so, and, and people have no idea about this. And by the way, the, the, the Google censorship might be the most pernicious because it's very easy for them to just nudge a link onto the second page. And there's that old joke of um, what's the best place to, you know, hide a dead body? Well, it's the second page of Google search results because nobody ever looks there. So that's, uh, that's pretty important to, you know, say, hey, did Google nudge? a search result uh, to the second page, because uh, that'll drop how many people see it by a factor of 10 or more, uh, maybe 100. So there's a whole bunch of that happening that's very subtle. And so you can't, it's, it's, it's much harder to detect than say an account suspension. Yeah, but this isn't very subtle at all. Everything that we just showed you, it's right there. It's blatant, it's obvious. I wanna remind you that after Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton in 2016, and it was, well, it was glorious, wasn't it? Can we just reflect on that for a minute? God, what a night that was. Oh, the screaming and the crying. They were so excited. They were so ready. Oh, the ceiling shattered finally. And no, no, people hate Hillary Clinton just that much. I remember, I remember that they really hated Hillary Clinton. We're about to see a similar visceral hatred for a candidate. Uh, but you remember that after that election, Google employees, Google senior management, Google ownership, the executive suite, they said, we won't let this happen again. We won't let the, as if they engineered it or something or allowed it to happen by actually allowing people to find information and discover information about the candidate of their choice. So if you're sitting there 16 days after the fact that a bullet whizzed past Donald Trump's head and clipped off part of his ear. And then he was pushed to the stage to protect him by the Secret Service. And then he merged with blood splattered across his face. And before being carted off the stage, he stopped and looked at you and raised his fist in defiance and in triumph and compelled you to fight, fight, fight. If you're looking for that information, if you want to know why 16 days after the fact, no major news organization is really doing much investigation in any way whatsoever, certainly not to the level that the New York Times sent a, a squadron of investigative reporters to find out what was going on with the wife of Justice Alito and a flag she was flying outside of her house. No, no, no. That we're putting a whole team on. But an assassination attempt of Donald Trump doesn't rise to the level. If you're looking for that information, you know why it's so hard to find now. And it's hard to overlook the fact that big tech is making this so that you can't find exactly the information that you want or desire, which is sort of the opposite of what they're there for and the opposite of what they're selling you on a regular basis. And it's also not hard to overlook the fact that reporters and journalists and news organizations, they've moved on from the assassination of attempt of Donald Trump because in their collective mind, and it's very much a collective mind, they have, it appears, reached the conclusion that, ah, it was just Trump. Who cares? Better luck next time.
that seems to be what they're communicating to you. And if you do happen to find any information out there about the assassination attempt, you may stumble upon ABC News this weekend doing what Rush Limbaugh used to call an accidental act of journalism. Oh, sure, here and there, there will be a one-off and you'll get you know, one reporter from one news organization finding one story that was buried over the weekend just so they can sort of hang their hat on it and say, oh, sure, yeah, 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 we covered that, we covered that. Well, ABC did cover it. And take a look at what they learned when they spoke with local law enforcement, specifically one of the officers on the SWAT team assigned for additional protection and support for the Secret Service the day of the Butler rally. We were supposed to get a face-to-face -face briefing with the Secret Service snipers um, whenever they arrived, and that never happened. So I think that that was probably a pivotal point where I started thinking things were wrong because that never happened, and we had no communication with the Secret Service. You had no communication with the Secret Service at all on that Saturday? Not until after the shooting. And by then? It was too late. By then it was too late. Yeah, you might uncover that little tidbit of information, which, by the way, did not get picked up in the Washington Post. And see, this is how the news media usually works. You know, yeah, ABC News will go out there, get this tidbit of information, kind of newsworthy. Officer on the SWAT team in Butler says that they were scheduled to have a meeting with the Secret Service snipers the day of the rally, but the Secret Service didn't show up. And they had no communication with the Secret Service until after the shooting took place. That's news. And usually what happens is, yeah, you get one reporter from one news outlet uncovers the news. And then the Washington Post writes about it and the New York Times writes about it and the L.A. Times writes about it and CNN talks about it and NBC talks about it. And they say, well, yeah, yeah, ABC got this information. But then they send their own reporters out there and say, well, why did they get it? Let's get our own exclusive on that. And then you talk to another person and then the story grows and it builds and you actually uncover information. And it's, you know, it's it's journalism. That's not happening. That's not happening in this case. And I want to reiterate. I don't know about you. But as an American citizen and as a voter. And as a Republican. And as a Trump supporter. Every single night, I still think about this moment. Every single night, I think about that, that dreadful feeling that I had when I saw the video of Trump grabbing the side of his head and falling to the ground. And as I learn more and more and more, mostly through independent journalists, about the breakdown of communications, the complete and total failure of basic Secret Service protocols, uh, something like this, that there was no communication between the local SWAT team and the Secret Service, and the Secret Service didn't even bother going to the meeting to brief the local team, I hear more about this and I have this pit in my stomach that grows and grows and grows. I'm not over. I'm not over the fact that a bullet almost ended the life of Donald Trump on live national television in front of the entire world just months before a presidential election where he was charging toward victory. I'm not over that. Are you over that? And why is the mainstream media, the corporate owned legacy media, along with their partners in crime, big tech, why are they pretending that everybody is over it? Or why are they implying that you should be over it? There's nothing to see. Move on. We got bigger stories. I mean, it's the Olympics opening ceremony. We have to blaspheme the Last Supper, don't you know? Change the subject, move on. Come on, grow up. It was just Trump, right? It was only Trump. No big deal. Yeah, I'm not over it. Not by a long shot. And the more they try to hide this, the more they try to try to sequester it and cover up the facts, the bigger and bigger that pit grows. We're not letting go of it over here. So check in daily. We're going to give you everything that we learn, everything that we know. And when they ignore it and when they try to sequester and, and stifle and silence the truth like they're doing here, we're going to let you know about that too.